Okay. Um, now we're going to continue with our next talk. Um, I'll let Jimmy explain everything about his uh, lightweight embedded hypervisor. Hi, thank you for being here. Uh, it's nice to see uh, so many people. And um, I, I will talk about XVisor. Uh, you can see uh, this on the planning since I didn't know why uh, I couldn't put uh, such a long title. But uh, it's, uh, the topic will be hypervisors. So this one will be XVisor. So let's begin. Sorry for the, the format. Okay, so just the context, okay? Uh, the projects, uh, I'm Jimmy durand Vzalowski, uh, long name also. Uh, I'm working at OpenWide, a French company that uh, is uh, doing open source software, servers, and uh, engineering. So uh, you, are, we, you will have all the details uh, at the end of the slides. You will have the slides uh, in the end and everything, yeah, you see more about, I will not show this, but you will, uh, you can take a look. And I'm working in the Technological Research Institute of System X uh, in Saclay, France. Okay, the context, uh, the hypervisor is in the car. It's a solution we will use, but it's just the context. The topic is Ixvisor. Okay, just to be sure, quick definitions. I think you all know that, but just to be sure. Um, a virtual machine is uh, an efficient isolated duplicate of a real machine, just to be sure. Okay, I think everybody knows this, but okay. Just give a quick definition. An hypervisor is a software or firmware, depending on the classification, we'll talk about this later, uh, that creates and runs virtual machines, we will call them guests, and the, the hypervisor is the host. Well, we invite guests on the board. Uh, this rely on virtualization support on the host CPU. You use the CPU to execute instructions. The, the guest instructions to be more specific. Uh, this is different with an emulator. An emulator is a fully duplicated real machine. You see, you also see a full real, uh, from a guest point of view, a full real machine, but the CPU is emulated, you, you translate the code. So for a quick classification, uh, there are two types of hypervisor, the, which, which is called bare metal, the type one, and uh, the one on NOS. Okay, just to, just to know, for example, uh, okay, we will explain the classification. Um, the bare metal is as a better isolation and an improved reliability. And of course, uh, it can be smaller since it, it can be, uh, it doesn't have to be a full OS. But for the, the type two, you have lower costs. That's Maybe interesting, no additional drivers, so less development, but it's a full OS. For example, you have for type two, uh, VMware Workstation, VirtualBox, you, you know, uh, if you know VirtualBox or uh, VMware, I think, uh, KVM and Beehive. Okay. Uh, for the type one, you have VMware ASX, SXI, Xen, Xvisor, or Hypervisor, the, the one we are working on, KVM and Beehive. Okay, no, nothing curious. It's just, okay, uh, KVM and Beehive are more qualified as type two, but as it is running directly on the hardware, there may be a confusion, but it's more likely to be a type two. Just a precision. 
Okay, let's talk about X visor. Two words. It's a great project, uh, very well designed by Anup Patel, uh, who launched the project uh, in uh, 2010. Uh, his, his first uh, version is, uh, was released in October 2011. 010, okay. Now it, we are 250. 13 contributors. It's growing, growing very fast. So it, it's interesting to, to go uh, in the project now since uh, there are few contributors. You can submit ideas, you can do whatever you want with it. And if you think you have a good idea, please tell Anna, tell, tell us what you think. Uh, many commits, it's already, you, you can already play with it. There is a demo I will, uh, I will show. Uh, it has a high performance and low memory profile. Um, low memory footprint, uh, a large support with many ARM platform and x86-74. It's working on our QEMU for, uh, for tests. It can be really, really useful and you can give a try. You can <coughs> test, you can now uh, with, uh, with your lot, laptop uh, clone the last uh, repository and, uh, and give a try. Uh, there are already a support for many platforms. You, everybody knows the Raspberry Pi. Uh, there is the VXPress A9 that you can use also on QEMU. Uh, and uh, Horboard, the Sabolite Nitrogen CZX uh, is supported. The Kubi Board 2 also, so it may be interesting. Uh, and the configuration is really simple. So it's, it can be very, very easy to go in, uh, in testing and then uh, contributing if you, if you want. Uh, it supports different type of emulation. I'll talk about this later. And it is fast, can be interesting. Um, Anup Patel wrote a research paper, uh, very interesting. I, I hope uh, this will be released soon. Uh, some tests have been, have been done at that time. Uh, it's faster than KVM and Xen, and it, it has be better uh, read, modify, write operations, so uh, uh, better throughput. There, is, there are many features like a Linux. Uh, the, the framework is really like Linux. I will show this. Uh, there is n already networking, telnet daemon, loadable modules, and very, very nice features for emulation. For example, if you want to support your board, you have Linux drivers for your board. You only have to introduce the API, okay, globally, a, a simple vision. For example, uh, completion, easy. Uh, Radix tree, okay, nothing to do, perfect. But of course, some layers are not implemented yet, of course, it's still a, a small project. Uh, and the, some mechanisms are simplified. And of course, because it won't be very fun if it was working uh, already. Um, you know that manufacturers and uh, developers have to do sometimes some workarounds in drivers for Linux. You have layers and uh, you have to deal with them and uh, the hardware is not perfectly adapted. So. Uh, so that leads to bugs. And for example, uh, if you watch the S MMSC SD management in Linux, you have uh, three layers, the MMC layer, the SDHCI layer, and the driver, finally, to support the hardware. 
uh, sometime the MMC layer is doing something in Linux, which is not completely, the behavior can be a bit different since it's simplified in XVisor. And we had many problems with this. You can port a driver in, I, I would say, uh, one week, but sometime can be one more or more months. So uh, it's easy, sometimes pain painful, but not every time. Uh, just to show you the, um, the configuration. Uh, uh, it's not working. Uh, this is an example of configuration. If you know device tree, you already know this. It's quite the same, not completely the, the, the same syntax, but it's very close. For example, what we, we have here is the configuration of the host, the upper layer. It has been split it in uh, multiple uh, files to be more readable. If you look in sub board configuration file, you see same thing. It's for this platform. We tell exactly what we have in our board, exactly like in Linux. And this is the board very, very, very similar to what we have in Linux. So, porting is easy. And finally, the host, the hypervisor is very, you can, you can have a, a very easy configuration, but the, also the guest can be really simple as it is the, the same thing. You have a device tree, you put exactly what you want, where you want, for example, uh, we would like the board to know that there is PCI, but we will not, for uh, I2C, but we will not use it, so it's virtual, and we define a uh, memory area. Okay, just to show you a bit, let's continue. Um, I told that there is multiple way of uh, emulating. For example, you have, uh, let's say you have a free Nivi uh, OS, a Linux, you don't want to modify the drivers. You can emulate, completely emulate the device, okay? Of course, that is useful, but you may want to have a quick memory interface. You may want to have direct, um, direct uh, memory management, direct memory access, so you can configure through the emulator a pass through, uh, a pass through here to access, to have a faster access to hardware. You can do power virtualization, with or without Virtio, virtual input output, to communicate with drivers and finally with hardware. And we see there the configuration files. I, I, uh, I specified this one also. If you have Linux, there is also a device tree, three device tree that that I use, and quite similar. Okay, now uh, this is just to show you uh, how the memory production is implemented. Uh, the XVisor support ARM32 without virtualization extension, which is really, really cool. Uh, of course, it relies on software, but you can use, use them 
So if you are a simple boy, you can use XVisor and have uh, a fully uh, useful uh, hypervisor. Um, you can, of course, use it with virtualization extension and hardware-assisted material. Just a point here. They may be something strange. They are both in user mode. But it is protected with domains. So the user space, the kernel is protected from the user space, thanks to uh, memory domains. I don't talk about x86. I don't know. Uh, you, you can ask Anup if you have a project on x86. OK, why, uh, how do we do this? Uh, there is a uh, translation. We have a, a guest virtual address, which is translated into, which is called an intermediate physical address. Like the, it's the virtual address of the hypervisor, Xvisor. And translated, finally translated with the host MMU into a physical address. So here it can be hardware if you have virtualization extension, or it can be software if you don't. Okay, in order to do this, uh, for example, uh, emulators um, at execution time check what is done in the code. We do not want this. It's too slow. We are embedded. We want speed. We want to be cl the closer as possible to the, the, the hardware. We want the, the same behavior. So this is done offline. You have your binary. You have to know where your code is, which is, uh, which is why we use, for now, we use the ELF format. We know where code is, where data uh, is. So it's, it's easy to know where are the, um, the privileged instruction. And we translate it into hypercalls. I don't have time to explain all this. It's very interesting, but it's, it's a bit long. There are slides from Jim Hong that you can find on the internet, um, which explain this very, very well. OK, just some links uh, to, to know a bit more. Uh, there are many things, many cool things to do. So if you want to contribute, please do. It's really interesting. Uh, it's fun. It's a really nice project. It's very, uh, the, 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 the community is growing every day. Uh, there are many, many commits per day. So if you want to, to give a try, please do. Use it or contribute as you wish. Um, a few links also uh, with the uh, Jim Hong slides. And uh, I, will, uh, I will try to show you a quick demo. Uh, Sorry, since I, uh, I use um, a feature which is not really well implemented. I plugged the USB uh, while my uh, computer was uh, sleeping, so it, I have to reboot just to be sure. OK, I exec. Thank you. If you have questions, uh, we, we can talk uh, about what you want just after, uh, since I don't want to, to, to take uh, too much time. OK. Uh, OK, perfect. Ah, 
fine. Okay. It's okay. It's all fine. Yeah. So I'm running um, I'm running scripts on my uh, GTAG probe. Okay. Uh, what we see here is not very useful. This is more useful. You see XYZOR running. Uh, okay, the errors I, uh, are because of my uh, SD card, which is not, which is not, uh, which is not ready. Uh, you you have a, a good monitoring of what uh, are the drivers running, what are the guests running, well, what we everything we we want to know about the status. And uh, as you can see, there is already uh, support for a screen. Uh, if your screen is not, uh, you, you just have to change the device reconfiguration and you, if everything goes well, your screen will be supported. So, okay. For example, we can change uh, the backlight. It's not very fun, but you can see something the problematic of embedded uh, devices. Okay. Okay, off, full powered, uh, half powered, etc. You can add your commands. Uh, this command uh, didn't exist at the beginning. You can add very, very easily. Uh, commands and debug everything you want. And uh, if you have a GTAC probe, you can do whatever you want with XYZOR. It's quite simple. So uh, here it is, XYZOR. If you are uh, interested, please, uh, we, can, uh, we can talk uh, later if you want. Thank you for, uh, for being here. Thank you for uh, your attention. And uh, enjoy for Zoom. Thank you.